Welcome to another Video Growth Hacking Show episode. My name is Gideon Shalwick. I'm the founder of Splashio, and I'm delighted to have you here. Today, I've got Justin Brown with me on the call from Primal Video. And uh, Justin and I have a very interesting history. We've known each other for many, many years. And in fact, I'm delighted to say that I've known Justin before he became famous. <laughs> famous on the <laughs> internet, at least. And uh, it's just been so so rewarding and inspiring to watch uh, Justin over the years go from having a fairly small video production kind of business or at least I don't know how big it was but I didn't get the impression that it was a multinational kind of business or anything like that uh, to now where Justin and his brother Mike has built a YouTube channel of it's close to, close to 800,000, if not more than that already. It's just growing so fast. Every time I look, I've got to sort of readjust my numbers. It's just grown from strength to strength from strength. And um, I think what's been really uh, very fascinating about watching Justin grow his YouTube channel, him and uh, Mike, his brother, was that it started off uh, with not much happening. And, and they were really struggling at the beginning. I remember having a chat to them and uh, round about that time, and I think they were kind of Justin can maybe confirm this in a second with us but they're almost ready to kind of give up on it because they were publishing and publishing and nothing was really happening for I think six months or something when they started taking it seriously and then all of a sudden things started taking off and it just it just it just started growing and growing and growing and uh, you know that's only like two or three years ago that that started happening so um, it, it hasn't taken all that long to go from you know, a few hundred subscribers to now close to 800,000 subscribers. And, um, and I think it's testimony to, uh, to pushing through and, and, and not giving up. And that ties in really well with our uh, subject for today's call, which is all about how to um, overcome excuses for using video to grow your brand and to grow your influence online. And so without further ado, I'm delighted to introduce you to my friend, Justin Brown. How's it going, Justin? Very well, thank you. Thanks for having me on. It's awesome to have you here. And, you know, this is the first time that I'm actually interviewing you. You, you've, you and Mike have uh, had the opportunity to interview me in the past, so I'm returning the favor. And um, uh, it's almost, um, you know, it's a bit like, uh, well, I don't know if I, I could be so forward to say it, but uh, almost like the, um, the the teacher becoming the student, you know, uh, <laughs> certainly in the, uh, in the most a few recent years just watching your growth uh, and the stuff that you and mike have been doing has just been phenomenal so i have um the, the question that i want to start off with is um you know why video what 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 is the interest in video what was the original attraction to video for you how did you get into it i guess i've always been interested in video from a very young age uh my parents always had video cameras and they were the big ones that you normally had like a big backpack for and carrying around like a VCR and all of the young videos of me as a kid, I was always, Hey dad, can I, can I have a look? Can I have a turn? Can I make a video? Uh, so I guess from a very early age, I had some sort of interest in video and it was more of a hobby as, as I grew up making, you know, little home movies and that kind of stuff. And then it wasn't until I started to get involved in, uh, in the surf club and, and, and around the beach and surfing and those sorts of things that my passion for video really grew from there. I was like, this is fun. I can make videos that are fun and, uh, people were enjoying watching them. So that's kind of there where it snowballed from there to more of a from from being a hobby and something fun is how can i make money from this and i can create videos for people and they're going to pay me money uh and then yeah it snowballed to to me working with uh some really amazing people uh some really influential people and some really crazy people as well big wave surfers and free divers and things so uh yeah i, I guess i've been really lucky in some of the opportunities and and uh and things that have landed in my lap uh on this journey Mm, and it, it has been a very, very fascinating journey watching you, and I, I think testament to to show that it's possible for anybody. Uh, I think one of the one of the key advantages that I noticed with you was that, uh, you know, you when you got into the game, uh, you already had a good knowledge about video and video production. But uh, what I also found out about video marketing and growing your business or your brand with video is that the production side of it is actually. A relatively small part of it it's nice if you can create nice looking videos but th th there's more to it than just that um 
Can you tell me a bit more about how you've used video to, uh, you know, to grow your business and to grow uh, your brand and to, to get this phenomenal um, exposure on the internet? So for, for us, our platform of choice is YouTube. So we're, we're a little biased in saying that it is the best place to put your videos online. Uh, but the reason, I mean, the, what, what we use it for and how it works for us is it's essentially the face of our business or the absolute top of funnel. It's where uh, people anywhere in the world can search for something on Google or YouTube that's uh, related to, to our business. And we're able to show up there uh, and help and support them and, and impact them with our content. So we're very strategic about the content that we create. It's not that I think, uh, oh, this would be a really good video to make and go and shoot it. We, we'll start with the research first. We'll validate our ideas. We'll look at what our ideal customers, subscribers, our ideal people, what are, what are their pains? What are their problems? What are they waking up at two in the morning thinking, oh shoot, if I could just figure out this one thing uh, tomorrow, then my day is going to be better. And that's whatever they're typing into Google at that point or YouTube at that point, that's the videos that we want to create. We want to be the one that solves that pain or that problem. So once we started to take that approach into our content, then YouTube became this amazing uh, organic traffic source for us, not just for growing subscribers, but also for bringing in a ton of leads into our email list and flowing through to our business as well. So um, that's why we love YouTube. Your content sticks around on there for years. We have videos that are upwards of five years old now that are still bringing in almost a thousand views a day, again, from something that we've done nothing with for five years. So that's the power of YouTube and that's what it's done for us and for our business. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, and um, I'd, I'd like to, um, I'd like you to take us back to that moment uh, when you and Mike were really struggling to get this thing to take off because you've had the success now, but there was a moment where it was pretty close, right? Where where the two of you thought, hey, is this really worth doing? Uh, take me back to that moment and, and share with me and, and our viewers and listeners, what happened there? Like what, um, what made you push through and, and why didn't you give up? Um, or uh, what would have had to happen for you to give up? Maybe that's also a good question to answer, but ultimately, what was it that made you and Mike decide to keep going? Well, in like our approach to YouTube has always been maybe a little different to, to others. For us, it was a business tool. We wanted to use it to bring in traffic, to, to impact people and help people with our content. That was always our goal. And so, I mean, I don't resonate with the term YouTuber. I wouldn't say that I'm a YouTuber. Yes, I make videos and put them on YouTube, but it's a tool for our business uh, to, to generate organic traffic. So when that wasn't working for us, we were you know, six months in, I think we had less than 50 subscribers at that point. And some of those channels, I'd created uh, multiple channels just to try and make that number look a little bit better. I think I had created a channel for my mom uh, as well. But it was really frustrating to to uh, to not have the success with just doing what the experts out there were telling you to do. Just create more content. Just upload more. You know, more content equals more views. And it wasn't just a matter of going through the motions of creating videos and throwing them up and hope that a video would take off. It was really about having a strategy, and we didn't have that strategy. So it did get to the point where Mike and I were like, you know, this is a bad business decision for us now. This is not paying off. We're investing a lot of time into this, um, really just hit and hope strategy. Uh, but we were going through the motions, we were creating a lot of content and it was getting next to no eyeballs on it. So I see a lot of people that are stuck in that same place today, just going through the motions, doing what they think they need to be doing, but they're not seeing any results. So we literally jumped on a call and we're like, we need to, to either start to figure this thing out and start to see some results with this, or we should stop and try and do something else. And it was at that time where we started to believe a lot of those big myths that people have about YouTube, that it's too overcrowded or that it's too late or that you've you've missed the boat and other people are already creating the content or have already created the content that you want to create so we started to believe that that stuff might be true as well but what changed for us was almost it's kind of like a mindset shift so we looked at youtube and said out of all the platforms out there youtube is a search engine so at least it's got some potential for people to be able to search for stuff to find our content. So we just needed to work out how the system worked and what we could do to help YouTube put our content 
in those search results and put our content in front of people that were looking for our videos. So that's where we went down the rabbit hole of SEO strategies and all of those sorts of things and doing a lot of YouTube courses, doing a lot of trying and testing and a lot of failing uh, to, to work out a strategy now where we are doing that research before we create every single video to get the maximum amount of return a maximum amount of effect in that video that we're creating to to be able to optimize the content right through from what we're saying in the video right through to the thumbnail image to make sure we're getting that click right through to keeping people engaged in the video and making the making sure that we are giving the viewer everything that they need to walk away from watching one of our videos and say i learned everything i need to know for that specific topic so you don't want to hold back on your viewers so all of this i mean it sounds so simple now when you hear it but this took us a long time <clears throat> excuse me a long time to to try and test to figure all of this stuff out so it was would you say that it was more of a gradual process mm -hmm. than sort of waking up one morning and going mm, i'm gonna give this one more shot i'm gonna try this seo thing and then see what happens was it what was it like was it was there i want to get to that there must have been a switch at some point psychologically in in your and your brother's uh minds where you went okay we're gonna we're gonna stick to it and we're gonna we're gonna make this work or you got some sort of uh results from from something to make you go yep there's this potential here what was there something like that or was it more like a a gradual thing over time it was it was kind of a bit of both because it did take like there was one point where we were literally on a call as i said where we we're like this is this is it we need to start to to figure this out and start to try and test more strategically uh, or it's not going to be worth our time so from there the things that we started to test were what are the things what are the inputs we can give this youtube system what what are we able to not, not to game but what are the areas that we can try and test and, and tweak and adjust so it is things like your title of your video, what you're saying in the video, the tags, the descriptions, your thumbnail images. We just started trying and tweaking different variations to see what works, to see what got more clicks, to see what titles would uh, would help our videos show up in ranking and get more views. Um, so it really was a combination of looking at all of the things that you can do with YouTube to help it place your content, to then figure out what we needed to do in each one of those areas to make it work. And how long did it take you guys to to finally get some traction? And like, uh, you know, in six months, you had 50 subscribers. I actually thought you had a bit more than that. So 50 is it's pretty low. I mean, compared to what you got now, how, how long did it take you to 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 realize, hey, there's something here that's that's worth pursuing? It, I think it was about a year after that that we really started to to see some results with it and again we were still you know i was still working video production mike was still full-time uh working in startup businesses and and, uh, and business strategy in in a company in singapore so that's where it wasn't until we we fully committed on that and said right we, we're going to figure this thing out we're already starting to see the potential there was actually a really critical moment for us that came through uh, and it was early on around this time where we we're like, you know, this isn't working for us. And we started to get comments coming through from people saying, thank you so much for making these videos. You've helped me make my first videos. And uh, one, one in particular was you've helped me make my first video and it's around uh, raising awareness for autistic children. And at that point, you're like, this is, this is game changing stuff. This isn't about me. This isn't about subscriber numbers or anything like that. This is about helping other people get their message out and, and doing what they've got to do here. Um, so at that point, we're like, all right, we need, we need to make this work. We like clearly our videos are helping people. We need to get them in front of more people. Um, so that is where we went down sort of the SEO rabbit hole and, and researching our content a lot more to get really strategic about the content of ours that was working. So at the whole time we're looking at our data at our analytics to see which videos were performing which ones weren't and then trying to figure out why and it was really the more structured we became the more systematic we became with our content um, it was those videos that were really taking off interesting that you mentioned that message you got from the uh, autistic community and how that impacted them and how that impacted you then knowing that it changed their lives and it and then would, would, would you say that um, that possibly um, had an, an effect on you and Mike to think bigger than just yourself? Was that, was that part of, do you think, what happened there? 
Well, I think, yeah, I, I think it definitely did. It made, it allowed us to separate and remove any ego or any attachment to it being about me or being about subscribers and those sort of vanity metrics and numbers. It's like, okay, our content has the ability here to impact people. And clearly it's helping people uh, when they're able to find it. So we really need to, first off, keep making this kind of content, but second, make sure that people are able to find it. Uh, it became more of an urgency at that point than, uh, than, oh, this is gonna help us grow our business. It was like, all right, we actually have something that's pretty powerful here. Um, and this is the beauty of this is, this is something that anyone can do. We all have our own knowledge, our own experiences, our own personality as the glue to pull it all together, our own thoughts and opinions. So, I mean, if anyone's sitting there listening to this, thinking there's already people making this stuff, there's already people doing what I want to do. There is no other you. And I know that that sounds cliche and I know that I'd heard it before, but it really is. It's a personality driven business. It's a brand, it, it's, a, it's a personal brand driven business. And it can, it, it's just, it's huge. There is so much potential on there now. Uh, and it's definitely not too late. So if you're listening to this and you're, 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 you're kind of still think that you're not quite sold on the idea, um, yeah, I mean, this is something that, you know, the best time to start was yesterday. This, the second best time is, is today. Uh, so, yeah. I, and that's, I think, a really nice segue into the next part of our um, discussion, which is about excuses, you know, that, that we all come up with for not using video, not getting on camera and, and, and not uh, building a brand there for ourselves or for our businesses. Uh, I mean, uh, this has definitely happened to myself as well. I mean, I got an early with the video marketing game. Um, I'd like to boast that for about three years, I had the number one um, ranking you video on YouTube for how to get more views on YouTube. Uh, so it's number one for that until other people started figuring it out. And uh, I think I kind of stopped my activity on YouTube uh, a few years before you started. Um, and, and that's interesting, you know, because part of the psychology in my mind was I was thinking, oh, this, you know, well, I was getting distracted with other businesses, but definitely over the years, when I thought about getting back into it again, I thought, oh, there's too many people already doing this thing now. It's too crowded. But what's been interesting watching you and Mike is that um, even though it seemed crowded, you know, when you were starting out, you weren't the first one to start talking about, you know, how to create video on YouTube, how to use YouTube for uh, growing your business. However, uh, you still managed to grow the channel tremendously. I mean, you're well on your way to towards your first million subscribers. It's, you know, it's going to be very soon for that to happen for you guys, which is just incredible. Um, so I think that's real testimony to it. But let's talk about some some excuses that you've seen people talk about for not getting into it. I've, I've got a few of my own excuses, but um, what are some of the excuses you've seen people talk about? Maybe you've had some own excuses of your uh, of your own because uh, it took you guys quite a while to get into it, right? I mean, it, it, in, in a way, you were lagging a bit behind jumping in on the YouTube game. What was it held you back? What were some of the excuses you and Mike had? And what are some of the main excuses you, you see and hear other people talk about? I think you could name almost every excuse and I've probably had all of them or at least some some uh, inclination of every excuse under the sun when it comes to uh, being on camera. I would always say that, you know, I'm not an on-camera person. I'm a behind-camera person. Uh, it literally came down to the point where Mike and I were doing paper, scissors, rock as to who was going to be the face of this, who was going to be creating videos. And uh, and I drew the short straw on that one. Uh, so, I, I mean, that's the kind of thing that none of us are born to be presenters. There's some people that pick it up really quick. There is a few people that uh, can just press record and and, and, and nail the perfect video in one take. That's a very, very small percentage of people, like less than 1% of people. Yet we all strive for that. So when we try and it doesn't work for us, then we get frustrated and we beat ourselves up. There, there's so many little things um, when it comes to excuses. And, and, and most of it is up here. The stuff like um, tech, probably the biggest one we see is I'll create videos when I have that new DSLR, that new mirrorless camera, because I see all these YouTube people that are using these fancy cameras and all of that stuff. It doesn't matter. One of the top videos on our channel or was the top video on our channel for a long time was filmed on the front facing camera on an iPhone 5. That's a phone from 2012. Now, and it's the front camera. So it's the, the lower quality camera. And people are still commenting to this day on a five-year-old video that they are blown away with the quality on it and they can't believe that it was filmed on a front-facing camera. 
let alone one from 2012. So, I mean, all of these excuses around technology and gear or whatever, it's all just stuff that's holding us back and, and stopping us in our tracks because the quality of the video doesn't matter anywhere near as much as the content, the quality of the content. There's people out there that are creating the videos that you want to create and they're getting the views that you could be getting and they're doing it with less gear than you've probably got. So, I, I mean, yeah, we, we, we can keep going with excuses, but... Uh, let's, you know. let's unpack that one, because I think that's an interesting one, because I, I would uh, certainly call myself guilty on that one as well, where I would think, okay, I want to create these videos, but uh, my setup is not good enough, my camera is not good enough, my background is not good enough, the lighting is not good enough, my face is not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> what can you do about that? I mean, what, what, is, the, what is the cure to... Uh, you know, to getting stuck on on the technology side of things. What? Uh, how did you overcome that? Um, what do you? What sort of advice do you have for some people who might go through that sort of thinking process and, and thinking, hey, I don't have a good enough camera, I don't have good enough sound or lighting or whatever it is. What is the solution to that? So I had the opposite problem in that I had the gear. I'd been creating, you know, documentaries and those sorts of things and action sports films. And I had the gear, but the people who I wanted to attract and speak to didn't. And if I'm there teaching videos and how you can easily make videos and I'm shooting it on, you know, cameras worth thousands and thousands of dollars and just a microphone worth a couple of thousand dollars, then it's going to be, oh yeah, that's all, all right for you. So I guess we needed to show people what was achievable with the gear that they already had and to to squash those excuses that they have that that the gear I've got isn't enough and that's where really our whole channel is designed to remove people's excuses to not taking action with this stuff we show people uh it, it, uh, how to to edit on their phone, how to film on their phone, how to uh, easily edit from their computer, or how to outsource their editing so they don't even need to do it. This is like it's it's literally every excuse that people have for video creation. Um, this is that's the stuff that they're typing into Google and YouTube. How do I do this? That's a stopping point. And that's where for all of us in any of our businesses, there are places where people are stopped. And that's the stuff that they're Googling. This is the perfect stuff to create content around. Right. So one that, that I've seen come up quite often is this um, this, uh, this theme around confidence, uh, being confident on camera or uh, the fear of being on camera and, and being maybe ridiculed by all these millions of people that could be watching you or something might be going wrong. What have you got to say about uh, that for folks? Yes, yeah, so a fear of judgment is one of the biggest fears that uh, humans can have. That's why people are scared of public speaking. That's why they're scared of pushing their comfort zones and stepping outside the box. And yeah, and imposter syndrome and all of those things. So, I mean, yeah, I, I suffered with that a little bit as well. And that's where it was so awesome for us to see those comments come through about uh, helping people with our content because at that point it was really easy to ignore the haters ignore the bad comments and say all right there are some people that are seeing value in this and we need to keep going and at that point i mean the people that are leaving you negative comments are the ones that aren't actually doing the work they're the ones that aren't actually doing it uh, so that's the important thing to remember. And we still get negative comments through. <laughs> I get some great comments through. Uh, but it, they really are so few and far between that it is totally irrelevant. Now, I, I would say that you need to be able to separate yourself from the comments. Um, YouTube of all places, there is trolls. There's a lot of trolls. I know that you, you would have experienced the same thing with your channel as well. Yeah. But it's uh, it really is that that those people that are commenting, leaving negative comments or whatever it is, they're not your ideal audience. There's a little block button. You can remove them from your channel. You can you can report them or whatever it is. Like you, you don't need to deal with that. Um, so it, it really is about looking at the big picture, looking at the people that are interested in your content and focus on those people, not the haters, not the trolls. But as for confidence and being on camera, it really comes from when you are seeing those good comments come through um, it is really the, the game changer. And it, it was for us and it is for a lot of our clients and students as well. Now, if you're in that point where you're still not confident to be on camera and it just feels so foreign and you're breaking out in sweat and you're not sure what to say, then I would say that the, the, the fix to that 
is to do some more planning before you get in front of the camera. If you know what it is that you want to say and you've either written it all out or you have clear dot points of the five things you're gonna cover in your video, that's gonna make it so much easier for you to present and then you can just think that you're just telling your ideal client, your ideal customer, these tips or, or this solution that you've got uh, behind the camera. It, you don't need to be overwhelmed by the camera and, 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 and freaking out with that little red, red flashing light uh, or anything like that. Think of the big picture. What is this video going to do? Is it going to impact someone? And that's where your confidence is going to come from. Nice. All right. What about this one? Because uh, this is one that I've had and I still get... Uh, quite often. Um, what if I'm too busy or what if people are claiming that they're too busy to be using video to uh, inject into their marketing strategy? I think it's the same sort of thing with like any one of us could be too busy to do anything. I could be too busy to go to the gym and there's obviously negative effects from not exercising. I could be too busy to eat. There's people that work too hard and oh, I didn't have time for lunch today. I think it comes down to priorities. I think with anything like this, it's going to come down to priorities. You have to prioritize this if you want the outcome that uh, that this is going to bring. It's not a short, you know, quick stint where you can create a few videos and be an overnight success. Nothing in life is like that. So it really is about having that commitment to the outcome, to the goal. Uh, and then you will push through. If you really want something and you can see that it's possible, then you will do the work to make it work. So I don't think it's an issue of commitment. I think it's an issue of commitment to the goal or to the outcome. So what about uh, if I'm deciding between building a personal brand or a company brand or a combination of both? Like what if, this, and this does relate to priorities, but what if I'm a busy, like that's why I asked the busy question, right? I'm a busy entrepreneur. Uh, I want to build a brand and my priority is to build the brand as opposed to my personal brand. I want to build uh, the product and, and get, uh, and don't necessarily want my audience to be attached to me. Uh, I want them to be attached to the, the brand of the business. And, and the main reason for that would be um, that the, the business is not so dependent on me. So I would remove myself as a sort of a, a bottleneck in the business. Or if I want to sell the business one day, it's not at attached to me and my value. Um, what about that? Like if, you know, if, if I'm a business entrepreneur, which is which it is my situation where I have a brand for a business, um, but uh, I have this opportunity also to creating to be creating video for my you know with me on the video and building kind of a brand around myself, but I actually want to be growing the business as well. What's what's your take on that? So I guess it's a personal brand versus business brand kind of question. Well, I think it does come down to the strategy that comes down to the uh, being efficient with your content creation, no matter which way you go there, whether it was for personal brand, whether it's for growing the business side of it, if you want to be the one on camera, then you have to really get the systems in place where you can batch record your content so that it's not, oh shoot, it's Sunday and I've got to record a video and get it out today. You don't want to be doing anything last minute. So it really comes down to, to recording your content in batch, but also that if you are going on the business side where you want to have a sellable asset at the end of it, does it need to be you that's on camera? Or could you bring in some staff or even hire some talent to start create videos? And there's a reason that we called our channel Justin Brown dash Primal Video. It's not just me at Primal Video. Uh, we have a team. We have my brother Mike as well. Uh, so we named it both because there is science out there or studies out there that say that people are more likely to follow people. Humans like interacting with humans. There's less uh, brand touch points that people will have to uh, see or, or be familiar with before they recognize your name. They'll remember your name faster than a brand, um, uh, you know, because it, it doesn't, your name means something. It's attached to a face, whereas a random brand name, it's, it's much harder for people to remember or they need to be across it a lot more. So we went the hybrid with that because at some point we'll drop the Justin Brown offer and just call the channel Primal Video. And that way we can pull me out of it. I don't need to be the one that's creating the videos all the time. Yet at the moment, the system works, the process works. We'll batch create our videos. I'll create eight videos at a time. We only release one video per week. And that's all that we've ever really done. We've experimented with two videos a week, but the growth wasn't double, but the work was. So we thought, all right, 
let's focus more on the research. How do we make sure that if we're going to create one video per week, that that one video per week has the best shot of being successful for us in our ever-growing library of content, uh, bringing in traffic for years. So that is our goal with this. So I think no matter which way you go, personal brand or building this as a company, you can be strategic so that you can pull yourself out of that. Mm, I love the strategic thinking there, especially with that hybrid model and to start off with you and the brand and then later on just becomes the brand and you can exit yourself or at least giving you that option to exit if you if you want to. That sounds like a really, really great strategy. Fantastic. Uh, Justin, we're moving towards the end of this uh, interview. And so before we move towards that, I've got another question here for you. And that is, um, you know, with all these obstacles that, that you've had uh, to... Uh, to be on camera and to create video and to push through, especially during those days when you were struggling, who were some of your inspirations? So what what were some of the things that pulled you through in the end that, that you could sort of rely on? Was it uh, people around you, books that you read, uh, mentors? What was it? Well, I, it's, it's going to sound a little cliche, but before I started the YouTube channel, I was watching your videos because I, I, I don't even know how I stumbled upon you uh, because obviously like we both live in the same area, but we're watching videos where you could be anywhere in the world. And as a South African person living on the Sunshine Coast, I didn't even know that you lived in the same area, yet I was watching and learning from you. And I loved your approach to it because you were you were literally just creating videos uh, and it looked like you were creating them so seamlessly that it was you. There was so much personality in them. And yet when I tried that, I felt like I had to force it a lot to bring personality in, to bring the energy levels up. It took me a long time to really get, I would say, comfortable uh, in front of camera. And it actually, it, I, it, it frustrated me for a long time that there was people out there that could just press record and get their content out there. And that's where we see still today, a lot of people strive for that. Editing is there for a reason. It's there to remove all of the crap so that the people just see the pieces that you want them to see. Just see the short, sharp, punchy video. And uh, yeah, so I mean, the people that I was watching starting out were was yourself. James Wedmore was creating amazing videos as well back in the day. Um, Tim Schmoyer as well was another one that I used to watch a lot of. And it was actually a video of Tim Schmoyer's, uh, he's from Video Creators, that really helped me out a lot. Um, I think Mike sent, uh, Mike, my brother, sent me through this video after he was, uh, he was watching me try and shoot some videos and I was struggling. Uh, I didn't have, I hadn't prepared properly for these videos. I was trying just to ad lib and do it off the cuff. And Tim was starting his videos and then stopping every few seconds. So it'd be, Hey, it's Tim from, uh, Hey, it's Tim from video creators. Uh, Hey, it's uh, so it, it was it was like that cycle where he just he couldn't get a sentence out, but then he would, and then he'd move on to the next one, and it might take him three or four goes, and then he'd move on to the next one, and at that point, I'm like, this is okay for me to do that, uh, and a lot of people don't hear that, a lot of people don't see that, they see just the finished product online. But know that I still do that a lot in our videos. I think the the neighbors in in uh, neighboring offices here would be sick of me saying sometimes the same sentence multiple times because I just want it to sound right. I want it to flow. And it's not that I do it anywhere near as much as I used to, but me seeing videos like that, seeing the raw, real stuff, because it's not what people see on the polished end of things or the, the finished video. Uh, that's what editing is there for. But it really is, is all about starting. It really also is all about practicing and you do get better over time if you've got those systems in place. So a big goal for us is that we strive for 1% improvement every single day or every single time that we're taking on a task. Every time I'm filming, what could I improve? Every time I'm editing, What's one little thing that I can improve on? And that over time adds up exponentially. And that's really what I attribute a lot of our growth down to is that we are constantly looking at what we've done and how do we refine that? How do we never have that mistake happen again uh, and, and, and move forward and always, always be improving is, uh, is something that we really look for. Final thoughts, uh, Justin, if you could leave uh, our audience with just one final thing to encourage them to uh to keep going with this video thing and for them to realize that it's worth it what would you tell them i would say that you already have everything you need right now to start creating videos go through the motions even if you post them and you you don't like them remove them 
but go through the motions of creating the videos. There's so many people that go from course to course or they watch YouTube video after YouTube video. So they have the knowledge, but they haven't actually done the work. They've never actually made a video. And that's where the learning happens. And that's so, yeah, you already have more than enough. If you've got a phone, if you've got a webcam, there's videos out there with millions and millions of views that were just filmed on old camera gear uh, or old webcams. You've got better gear than that these days. Uh, so you really, your, your excuses are gone with the technology. It really comes down to just starting, just practice. And your first videos are going to be your worst videos. And once you're okay with that, then you can look for that improvement over time. Justin, this was incredible. Uh, before we finish off, I want to just share with everyone where they can go to find out more about you. I've got your website up here, uh, Primal Video. For some reason, it's not showing up right now. Oh, there it is. Uh, so primalvideo.com is uh, you and uh, uh, your brother Mike's uh, brand that you've been building. Tell me a bit more about Primal Video and what you guys do there and uh, what can people expect to find there. So at Primal Video, we, we create content around three core pillars, creating quality videos. So we really have like an 80-20 approach to, to everything that we teach. So creating quality videos, then how do you get eyeballs on those videos? So how to grow an audience on YouTube. And then the third piece is once you're making the videos, once you've got the eyeballs, what are some of the revenue streams that you can use to bring into your business and to, to monetize uh, those eyeballs? And, and it's, yeah, it's, it's really an incredible experience because a lot of people miss the three. They might be able to make videos, but then they don't have the eyeballs or they've got the eyeballs, but they don't have the strategy around what they can do uh, and how they can impact and help people beyond that point. So those are the three pillars that we focus all of our content around and uh, yeah primalvideo.com is our website all right everybody if you're watching this or listening to this head on over to primalvideo.com and find out more about jb or as i call jb justin brown <laughs> and his mother uh, brother mike and um yeah there's lots of cool stuff there i know that you guys run uh, an accelerator kind of course every now and then as well i assume people can sign up for an early notification list there or they can sign up for something there justin is that right so there's an accelerator button on the top of that page primalvideo.com forward slash accelerator where you can join the wait list to be notified of our next intake into our accelerator program and that's really cool uh, i just want to mention something here i've um, re uh, recommended a bunch of people to this in fact Actually, we don't have to talk about that, but I've just recommended someone to join your course recently and they just love it. And I've already started seeing some massive improvements in their strategy and how they're producing their videos, how they position their channel, all that sort of stuff. So it's really, really good. And um, But you only have it open a few times a year. So if you want to get on the shortlist or waitlist for that, head on over to primalvideo.com, look for the accelerator button or menu item and make sure you join the waitlist for that. Justin, thank you so much once again. It was such an honor to have you on the call. I enjoyed it so much to hear your story again and a few more details that I didn't even know about. And um, just wanted to thank you very much. It was such a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me on. We should definitely do this more often. Absolutely. Thank you so much and take care. And say hi to Mike. <laughs> Good.